Hi everyone, this is an introduction to get you up and running with Beadographer. Beadographer is an app that helps you create designs for beading projects. You can create things like earrings, bracelets or ornaments. I thought the best way to show you how it works would be to make a simple beaded bracelet design. The final result will look like this. It's a thin bracelet made out of size 8 seed beads. This tutorial isn't going to cover every aspect of Beadographer, but it should give you enough of an idea to get started with your own designs. You can find more information by going to beadographer.com guide, which has the complete information about all the features of the app. So when the app loads, we get the choice of three types of beads. Round beads and cylinder beads are both beads that we would sew together with a needle and thread. Fuse beads are more commonly known under their brand names as perler beads or hammer beads. They are stuck together by assembling on a pegboard and then melting with an iron. For this project, I'm going to choose round beads. Our second choice is the pattern. We can choose the arrangement of beads depending on the stitch we want to work with. Because I'm designing for a bead loom, I'm going to choose the loom pattern. Finally, we get to choose the size and shape of the project. Because this is a bracelet project, it's long and thin, so I'm going to choose the long option, which gives us 40 columns and 200 rows. Okay, now the main screen has loaded up and we can see a friendly cat who is offering to give us hints. It basically tells you what everything does when you click on each tool. For now I'm going to hide it, but you can always re-enable it from the menu. Now let's take a look around our screen. At the top we have a toolbar, which is where all our tools are. On the left we have a bunch of different styles of bead to choose from. This is the palette, and the rest of the screen is taken up by the canvas, which is where we'll put the beads. Now most of the time we'll want to use the draw tool, which is already highlighted at the top left. It lets us add beads to the canvas. We just click on the canvas and beads will appear like this. There are a couple more things that you need to know when finding your way around Beadographer. The first is the menu, which we access by clicking on the gear icon in the top left hand corner of the screen. The menu gives us various options that we'll return to later. The other thing you need to know about is the bead library. We open it by clicking on the bead chest up here. In the bead library, we have a list of various beads that we can use in our project. These are real products that you can go and buy. The current ones listed are Miyuki size 11 round beads. I'll talk more about the bead library later. Okay, before I create the bracelet, I want to start by quickly trying out the basic tools, starting with the draw tool. I'm going to use it to add some beads. I'm going to choose colors by clicking on the palette. You just choose the style you want and then you click where you want to add a bead. You can also just drag your mouse and it will add beads as it goes. We can see all these colors to choose from in the palette, but there are actually more hidden away. If we click on this arrow, we can see the whole palette. So if we make a mistake while drawing, we could erase it again with the erase tool. There are three ways of getting to the erase tool. You can click on it from the toolbar, you can press E on the keyboard, and you can also access it while using the draw tool. Just hold down shift and it will select the erase tool for you. I'll be mentioning a few more keyboard shortcuts as we go because it really makes work a lot quicker. Another basic tool that you might recognize is the paint tool. Just like in Microsoft Paint and other similar painting programs, this tool paints a region all the same color. So for example, if I wanted to make all of these beads yellow, I can select the paint tool and then click here. The last thing I want to cover before we get started on the bracelet is how to change the view. This is the hand tool, which we could also access by pressing H on the keyboard. It lets us pan around the canvas like this. When the hand tool is active, this wheel appears in the middle of the screen. It lets us work at any angle. If you want to reset the rotation, just click on the middle of the wheel and we're back to the start. If you keep clicking on the middle of the wheel, it will rotate the view by 90 degrees each time. To zoom in and out, we can use these two tools or press plus or minus on the keyboard. Now that we've covered a few basics, let's get started and build the bracelet. The first thing I want to do is create my own palette. Most of the time, I won't use the default styles, I'll just make my own. So we'll start by clearing the palette by going to the menu and clear palette. Now we can add our own styles to the palette. Adding styles to the palette is a two-step process. The first thing we do is open the color pickers. We can do this by clicking on this icon here or by clicking on this big bead down here. Now we can see three sliders that let us change the active color. When we're happy with the color we've got, we drag it into the palette to save it. Let me talk about these three sliders as they may seem a little intimidating at first. 
They alter the hue, saturation and luminosity of the color that we're creating. But what does that mean? Well, the best way to understand it is to start with the hue slider as a way of selecting colors from the rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue and so on. Now the saturation slider changes how vibrant that color is. On the left, it's not there at all and we're left with a gray. On the right, the color is very vibrant and really pops out. Once we've decided how vibrant we want the color, we can then change the luminosity. This is how light or dark the color is. On the left, the color is so dark, it becomes black. On the right, it is so bright, it becomes white. After you play with these sliders for a while, it should become easier to find that perfect color that you have in mind. There's one more thing we can do to create our bead style, and that is alter the finish of the bead. In other words, change how shiny it is. We have three options here, each represented by a little bead. The first bead sets the finish to be matte, which is not glossy. The middle bead makes the finish a bit glossy, and the third one makes it really shiny. Okay, so I'm going to create six colors for this bracelet. White, light green, dark green, light blue, dark blue, and a charcoal gray color. Now that I've created them, I can put them in any order I want by dragging them around the palette. You can choose your own colors like I just did, or you can bring in beads from the bead library. For this project, I want to use Miyuki size 8 seed beads. So first I'm going to make sure that I have the right library selected by going to the menu. These are the seed bead libraries listed, and I'm going to choose Miyuki round size 8. Now when I open the bead library, those beads are listed. I want to find beads that match colors in my palette, so the way I do that is to click on a bead in the palette. Each time I change the color, it will search the bead library for beads that most closely match that color. When I have a product I want, I can drag it into the palette. Now the bead in my palette reflects a specific product that I can buy. Now I have my palette all sorted, I'm going to use the draw tool to draw two beads of each color onto the canvas, all in a line like this. Now I could keep going, but my bracelet has a repeating pattern and I want to make my life easy, so I'm going to just copy and paste these beads by selecting them with the marquee tool. To use the marquee tool, you draw a box around the beads you want to select like this. When the beads are selected, you can drag them to wherever you want them on the canvas. Notice that five more tools appeared when I clicked on the marquee tool. These are the transform tools, which rotate or flip the selected beads. I'm not going to use them right now, but you can play with them and you'll soon find out how they work. What I want to do is clone my pattern. I can do that in two ways. The first way is by holding down Alt on the keyboard and then dragging the beads. Now my pattern is duplicated. The other way I can do it is by clicking a second time on the marquee tool. It is now yellow, which means any time you try to drag the beads, it will clone them. To make my pattern, I'm going to copy my beads right one space and down seven spaces like this. Now I'm going to select the lower part of the pattern that's sticking out and move it to the top so it lines up. Now I'm going to select the first part again and move it over two rows and down two spaces. And finally I'm going to take these last two beads and move them to the top. This is now the 12 row pattern that will keep repeating across the whole bracelet. Now's probably a good time to mention the beading tool. When you want to actually make the object you created, it's handy to know which row you're on so that you can pick up the right beads. This is what the beading tool is for. To use it, just click on the tool and then click on a bead where you want to start. To move the row, you can click on these tools here. You can also press the enter key or the backspace key on your keyboard. Currently, I have 12 rows, but I want 65 rows. So I'm going to copy these 12 rows five times, again using the marquee tool, then add five more rows. So let's zoom out and copy the rows down like this. Now our bracelet is finished, we can preview it by going to the menu and selecting preview. But what if I found out that I wanted different beads for the project? Perhaps I want to change the color scheme. This is where the color select tool comes in handy. Suppose I want to change the bracelet from a blue-green feel to a red-orange feel. Well, we don't have to go in and edit every bead. We can just use the color select tool really quickly. First, let's create a new color scheme that we like. I'm going to use some reds and some oranges. Next, we're going to use the color select tool and click on a bead that we want to change. 
Notice that all the beads that were the same color got selected in one click. Now clicking on a style in the palette will change the color like this. I'm now going to do the same with the other colors. And there you have it, a brand new style. This makes it really quick to try out multiple color schemes with the same pattern. The last thing I want to do is to share an image of my design. So I'm going to click the share button. Now I've downloaded a picture of the bracelet that I can share with people. I hope you've enjoyed this first tutorial on how to use Beadographer. There are quite a few features I didn't talk about. I'll cover those in the future, but hopefully you have enough to jump in and get creating. Thanks for watching.